Yeah, stereolithography was a process where they had a plastic that would solidify if they hit it with a certain frequency laser beam. And so they would go beep, 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 beep. And they'd solidify little spots of it, and then they had a platform, and they'd lower it down one thousandth of an inch, and then do it again on another layer. So that was starting from a liquid, turning it solid in a certain pattern. Um, this process is a uh, additive process where you actually add a molten drop of material that will cool in place. And um, there are other technologies that use metals. Uh, there, are, people are using 3D printers for food, for things like cake decorating or making chocolates. So you can actually make your own chocolate candy at home. You know, if you if you've got a batch, you can make it in different shapes, write people's names on them, things like that. Um, what's that? Powders. Powders? Yeah. Like uh, a powder that would solidify later or center or. Yeah, powder that you can uh, Yeah. That's the other. That's the other main. Okay. Yeah, I've seen one that, that, that ones that uses like. Uh, I think brass spheres that are coated with an adhesive and you deposit the little spheres and they all stick together and then you put it in an oven and you heat that up and then the brass balls like merge into each other. Um, all kinds of techniques. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, as Jack said, I'm a mechanical engineer and I saw the 3D printer here at Porkfest last year running. I said, well, I want that, but I couldn't justify such an expensive toy. So then I decided, no, just just buy the thing because you, you got to keep up with technology. So I read an article uh, in Make Magazine that listed them all and read all the reviews. And I said, well, I'll, buy, I'll go in low end just to learn because it's kind of a toy. So I bought this one. This is a solid doodle. And it's uh, made in Brooklyn, New York. And it cost about uh, you know, $600 without the covers. Then I found out you need the covers, so I made my own covers. So, the first thing I decided was well, learn how to do it. And Jack said you can download uh, solid models from the internet for free. It's real easy. Oh, so I, anyway, back to the beginning. So I unpacked it, and uh, pretty, I couldn't get it to work. And finally, the baud rate, if anybody knows what that is, between the laptop and the thing was wrong. And I finally got that working. Sure enough, it worked. So it took me like three hours, and I started printing. So it was just around Christmas time, so I printed out snowflakes. Christmas ornaments that I downloaded from the internet. You know, it's fun. And then I downloaded a uh, cookie cutter shaped like a gingerbread man. So these, these are good, but you know, how my idea was how am I going to get get my 700 bucks or 600 bucks back? <laughs> so, uh, so well, I'll, I'll make something and try to sell it on eBay. I've sold lots of stuff on eBay or Etsy. So I decided, well, I'm going to make a, a Barbie furniture. These Barbies are really popular and all that. <laughs> so I took a chair that I have at home and I, I draw, drew it up, measured and drew it up, because I'm an engineer, drew it in uh, Inventor, downloaded it to the top thing, and then printed it out. So here's the chair. It's a, it's a design of, and it's made out of uh, four parts. Uh, and I, like, I only spent like a week on this. <laughs> and, and what this technology is, it, it, it prints in layers. And the layers are weak in one plane, just like wood, and very strong in the other plane. So I designed the chair to be strong in the correct planes. So then I went to the thrift shop and, and got a Barbie doll uh, just to see, because I can put my ad on eBay. I got the Barbie doll. <laughs> you better print some clothes for her. <laughs> and something's wrong. She doesn't sit ladylike. So sure enough, with uh, Google, you can find out that Barbie's proportions are very oddball. Uh, her upper body's normal, but her legs are extraordinarily long. So with, with 3D printing, I made the same chair with longer legs, and now she can sit correctly. So, so anyway, so that was so I put it on eBay and I put it on Esty, and uh, I used this doll and uh, uh, my my kids saw the ad and they said, "Well, why is 
why is Barbie naked? <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I didn't have any clothes for her. Anyway, long story short, uh, nobody wanted it. But, yeah, you know, it only cost like 50 cents or something like those two. But the advantage, the advantage to the 3D printing is the fact that you, you do your product and it doesn't work out, you can easily modify it and reprint it uh, that same day. So you can, your, your product's going to evolve very fast because you have the ability to create these uh, objects and you can modify them uh, a lot. So that's, anyway, so that's, uh, so still I'm continuing on my quest oh, to uh, try to get it to pay for itself. I haven't done anything yet. So I made, I made some, uh, I think, actually I forgot to bring it. I made uh, a little solar panel controller thing. Uh, I made a, pa a front panel on it. And I put that on eBay and that didn't sell either. But anyway, these are at home. But I made some outlet covers and uh, whatever. And then finally, I got a, I got a contract to build a, a high-tech water fountain. And you should see it out in the market soon. And what it does, looks like a regular office cooler, it has, but it has triple filtered and UV filtered water, and it has carbonated water, but it has nine different flavors of uh, drinks, and they're all healthy. None of them have sugar or, or uh, uh, artificial sweeteners in them. They use stevia. And in that, we had to have nine different uh, pumps that pump the concentrates. So I designed up a pump for them. It's a peristaltic pump. It has like a little lobe in there that inches the uh, fluid forward. And I made, made nine of these pumps in the guts. And in, and in the same project, we had to make a nozzle to fill up the water bottles. Because so, in the top, we had the nine flavors and the three different kinds of water, hot water, cold water, and carbonated water. So I made, made the nozzles. So I got, I got paid for this, and I, I didn't figure it out. But I ration, rationalized it that I got the design done, and I made about 25 iterations of the peristolic pump to get it to work, but it paid off. So that's that's where the um, that's where the 3D printing comes in, is you can make these iterations of design. And uh, I made I'll leave you guys come up look at it. a lot of the parts I made. I'll leave on the table. You can come up and look at it. And. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, printer next. I have to take the, I got to thread the filament, load the program, then it has to slice it into layers, and then uh, it'll build the, build the object. And what's, what's good, 3D printing has been around, what, 20 or 30 years yet? I think so, yeah. And it never went anywhere because the machines cost $30,000. But you, you can get the parts made fairly cheaply. <coughs> But the problem is you mail it out and a day or two later it comes back and then you want to change it again. It's too inconvenient. So you have to have it in your possession so you get the fast turnaround of the multiple iterations. And uh, they, they use what they called, uh, they call it resin base now. They got rid of that SLA name. But, but it has a resin which is a liquid plastic that's cured by ultraviolet light. And they uh, lay down a layer of the liquid and then they shine a la laser or UV light on it and it cures. It doesn't have the lay it doesn't have the layers that this has. And so anyway, so that's and those print those prices are coming way down. They used to be thirty thousand, they're gonna be some out out for eight or nine hundred dollars soon if they're on Kickstarter. And there's such a competition to make these things, the technology is moving very fast. And uh, this this company Solid Doodle, he was an offshoot for MakerBot, he got frustrated with them. And uh, it's a nice guy. They're not as fancy as machine, but he's, I think he's sold 10,000 of these. So he's actually done quite well. It's like amazing in, in two or three years. So, okay, so that's, that's, uh, oh, hi, yes. Yeah, was it much work to assemble it? About how long did it take to put it together? It came pretty assembled. Okay. I put the covers on myself because of, I was getting warpage. Okay. Yes. Uh, did you print out the pieces? Yeah, it print out. I printed them out in layers, uh, pieces like that, and then I then I put I put these special features like woodworking woodworking joinery. In fact, I looked looked at how people did woodworking joinery, and they, they go in there. So. 
another question? Yes. How much is the resin? Uh, it's about 30 bucks a roll. I don't consider it a factor. <laughs> Go ahead. What kind of yeah. tolerances does that thing have? Or does it, this one have? Uh, it, had, it doesn't have great tolerances, but it has great re repeatability. Like prints the whole small, so what I do is compensate on the drawings to make them bigger, and then, then they repeat. So, like I was able to have, you know, this is slightly out of sight, but they all fit together, so it's, it's repeatable. Uh, this type of, just three, well, there's, about, there's multiple sizes of uh, filament, or not sizes, materials of filament. This is uh, ABS which is a really strong material. But the newer material, but has a big shrinkage. There's a lot of, there's PLA, which is more popular because it's more environmentally friendly and it also doesn't shrink as much. And there's nylon coming. Uh, there's, there's companies, even the big companies are working on uh, plastic filaments so you can print some amazing stuff. There's actually wood filament that's mostly wood and has a little bit of plastic binder in it. So you can make wooden objects, they look really nice. I've seen pictures on the internet. Uh, and uh, part of my outline for the thing is to talk about how this can, uh, about the freedom part of it, since this is pork fest. And I, my first thing, I live in Maine where the sales tax is, well, I, don't have, I can buy stuff without sales tax. But I think, well, that's kind of stupid. But what, what, what this freedom that this does, I think it's going to give people as these uh, get better and become more common, uh, it has a freedom that you can disconnect from the corporations that have the patents. Right now you can't buy a lot of stuff because they're tied up in patents and lawyers. But once 3D printers are pervasive, uh, that patents are, are just a hindrance to freedom. That is, they'll give you the freedom to make what you want because you're independent of the patents. So. Uh, any other questions? I, I got to spread this and start if you want to watch me do it. It'll take a few minutes. Yes? Uh, I was wondering what kind of uh, 3D modeling programs can you use with the printer? Like, can you use CATIA or CADWORKS? Or? Well, yeah, I, I use uh, Autodesk Inventor, which is what I use at work. Yeah, that's what I use. But, but uh, uh, Autodesk company has one called 123 something. It's free and it creates the models. Uh, what's the one Google has? SketchUp. SketchUp. Yeah, SketchUp can do it. Almost anybody's program, you all do is save as .stl, and then you load it into here, and then it downloads it, and then it chops it up. And, and almost everybody has the uh, STL capability, all the CAD programs do. So, so it'll take me a few minutes. i got to pull the old filament out, put the new one in, upload a program. So uh, if you, you want to watch, fine, and take a break. So you mentioned you have to make the covers for it. Why is that? Why are the covers necessary? Okay, if, if, as part, if you make a thick part, it cools on the bottom and the top's hot, so it starts to warp and then it separates uh, from the platinum. Oh, okay. So, so you, it's, you, it's, you keep the chamber warm? Yeah. Yeah. Temperature, yeah, kind of. You keep and the there's chamber a There's a company called MakerBot that was really developed or pioneered the low end stuff and make a great machine. Only trouble, they went over to the dark side. They decide they're going to patent everything. They patented the heated chamber. And I, and, and, uh, and they're, they did a lot of criticism on the internet for doing this, and there's you know, pros and cons of patents. But I think it's a lot of stuff that other people developed, they patented, which you can do. So I, I don't think, I think their ethics are a little bit weak. I got this program 0.3 millimeters. So you can go to point one, but the parts actually don't look that much better. So it's faster. It takes a long time to, to like these chairs, it probably takes 20 minutes to do each part. So, but it, I have a program that when it's done printing, uh, it shuts, shuts off the heaters. So if you're not at home, it doesn't matter, it shuts itself off. Maybe those are pieces. The straight planes were in the right yeah. position, you said? So those, those you can try to break it down. You can, you can see how strong it is. This is the temperature chart here.
I'm going now is I'm, I'm retracting the uh, tail end of the building. Now you uh, slice it like this. 
So if you have the ABS in a drop down box, you basically have multiple filaments and the software knows which one yeah. and where. Yeah. yeah. I print, I've printed the uh, um, PLA, I, I which really prints nice. It's nicer looking. Um, okay, so it's slicing right now. And. Uh, Here's the extruder that extrudes the filament that comes, comes down out of there. It's kind of like a hot melt glue gun, it's the same type of head. And okay, now it's all sliced. So what you do now is you hit that run, uh, run job, and it'll hopefully it works because lots of times demos don't go yet. <laughs> but it's been really reliable. So the first thing it does in home, in home, it finds it's zero because it's very critical to find the top of the glass. So this thing was not very stable. Will this affect the accuracy of the... I don't know the answer. Stable <laughs> stable services, it's only minor. It's usually really good about getting the inside and knowing what's what. Yeah. There it's printing. If you want to come up and look at it. Stable services. Start that arm. Yeah, they have a, uh, they call those fills, and it's built into the software, and they build a lattice work underneath it that's very flimsy. Okay. So you can do overhangs, and then you reach in and just grab it with your hand and pull it out. Okay. Like some of the parts I did here with fills, the back of this chair I did with fills, and I peeled it off. Okay. Because see, the chair is suspended in space. You can't print in space. Right. So I, I put fills back here, and then I scraped it off. Okay. So. It's an, uh, it's a fun toy, and if you, if I say if you have kids and they're interested in the stuff, you should get them one if you have the box. The box. Yeah. <laughs> so how long have you had this one? I got it. I got it uh, just before November. It was just before Christmas, and I've printed. I've I print lots of stuff. Are there any, you know, other than obviously replacing the filament, are there any parts that tend to go on this that you need to... I haven't had any problems. I, I put a lot of time on it. Is there any maintenance, like cleaning the head out or anything? Uh, no. no really. yeah. I put a little oil on the rails. No, that's not bad. Did you build this one or did you buy it? No, I bought it, but I put the covers on myself. Okay, so which one is this? Where did you buy it from? It's, solid doodle, it's a solid doodle two, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, I was looking into that one. You like it? Yes. It had, it had bad re it had some bad reviews, but I ignored it. I didn't have the problems that they were mentioning. Is this the bigger one? I know they it's had a couple sizes, right? This is a smaller one, I think. Okay. Is it just yeah. a plate glass? That's yeah, it high? didn't come with a plate glass, but they have like a forum that they all, all the nerds discuss everything, and everybody said, just immediately go to the hardware store and put glass on, and that was the best advice. Yeah. Put any type of release agent on I put the opposite, and I, I, I made a mixture of the plastic and uh, acetone and I brush it on there and it puts a layer of plastic so it makes intimate contact. Sure. Because if it breaks off while you're running, you're, you're done. Right, right. I see the uh, the thing that's holding the spool seems to be uh, some PVC components. Is that, was that homemade? Uh, no, I came with it. Comes. It's the type of company they are. But they, yeah, made, they made that. That's 3D printed. Yeah, it's a balance. I think this is a twenty. This is a twenty-minute cycle. Anyway, this is what it's printing, and you guys can have these if you want. I only printed out, I think, fifteen of them. But this is the Alt Expo logo, but I turned it into a three D model. Right? So uh, that's what it's printing right now. So they can take those if you want. What I had, I had the computer on a wireless, so so I put it on my computer. This is wrapped on a wireless. I just sent it up to uh, Dropbox, and then I just put it over. There's a uh, there's a separate sheet, the green sheet. They print out. Oh, I saw the color. Is there any other questions? Twenty-six layers. Yeah, yeah. So I like this. It's not quite like that. So 
Uh, not yet, but I bet it will be. Yeah. So the big, the big plastic companies are getting into the uh, settlements. <laughs> oh, they, they didn't get into the talk, but a metal printing is coming on strong. Within three years, a metal printer will be available. I don't know. Three to five years, mill, mill is going to change. Yeah. And that's when the world's going to really change. Because you have metal printers that are strong. But right now they have metal printers, but they're about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We use for jet engine parts, manufacturer uh, production parts. Which, uh, the uh, space, what is that? SpaceX, the, the, the private, they, they printed their engines with three D printers. Yeah, they, they use three D printer for their jet engines on the so it's three D steel print or stainless steel printer. Yeah, now he's smart. He's right because he he said I can I can make more money uh, selling batteries. So if more people electric cars aren't really taking off, but if I get people, if I help other people with electric cars, I can make my money on my uh, automated back battery factory. That's his, that's, I think he's right. Do you have a pretty printer as well? Oh, here's some of the colors, the colors that they have. <laughs> I think he didn't, he didn't, they didn't put the, this is from, uh, this is like a ceramic thing. Uh, they didn't put the material on their samples, they should have. But it's different materials. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they didn't have clear. <laughs> Inside, when they print, they actually print the. Uh, I forgot to talk about this. They print the ins on solid. They know how thick they are. They print a honeycomb inside, but you don't know about it because when they're done, they put a layer on it. So this sounds like a honeycomb inside this uh, logo. Mm -hmm. and they do that to save material. It's all into the software. You don't have to do any of it yourself. Wow. So. How do they print over the top of the empty space? Uh, they, it goes fast and they just, they just go just over. Just pull strands across yeah, yeah, that. So, yeah, bridges, it. Yeah. bridges it. Yeah. 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 So this, yeah, it's putting a honeycomb inside the uh, Altex logo. But it's yeah. going to cover it up when it's done. Can you, can you control that? What's the control software that you're using with this? Thing? It's called Rep. Uh, it's called Rep. Did rep you got this? I don't know what we should do with the camera over there. I don't know what we should do with That's uh, open source? Yeah, it's open source. Yeah. You can download it. Just go to it. I don't know. Yeah. So, if you can get that, you buy the machine, then any uh, STL file you get off the internet or whatever, you can just kind of go yeah. through it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in the do it yourself. Realm. Check this out, Jack. Uh, yeah, I guess you're not an engineer. Well, 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 I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they sell these boards. Stuff. These are uh, Adreno boards. The boards are readily available if you want to put your own together. They're, they're less, they're like 80 bucks. There's X, Y, and Z. Everything's labeled, you know. I didn't put it together, but you can borrow it. The extruder head is where the, a lot of the, the stepper motor here. Right, that's where all the uh, things comes together. But you can buy those separately from companies that sell them. Aftermarket extruder heads. Oh, okay. Are there different uh, qualities and sizes yeah, and shapes yeah. and all that? And, okay. I was I, I was less interested in the machine itself. I wanted to try to make stuff. With it yeah. And see if I could. That's the charm to it. Really. Yeah. yeah. So you made the top? Yeah. 
all the internal stuff too? Uh, the, the, the steel parts, of course, bought. And the rollers I bought, they're nylon rollers. What, what type of pump is it? Peristaltic. It has like a, this is special rubber and it, it, it rolls the rolls. liquid forward. Yep. Yeah. And they're rare, they're, they're self priming and they're, they're, and they're very accurate pumps. They use them in medical a lot. Stuff like pumping blood, whatever. So I noticed here, we got a, like inside these shapes here, we have a different kind of almost fill pattern. Yeah, is they, that intentional? Is that, no, uh, I see. I don't control that? any of that. It's the guy who wrote the software, the slicing software. Uh, it's a, a different company wrote the slicing software, and they have all and they, and they keep modifying it. Do you do any uh, messing around with the slicer, or do you just go uh, with the default settings? Just default. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm more interested in, in not the printer, but in, in what it can print. Okay. And I and I bought a low end, thinking if I like this, I'll yeah. spring for two grand, and then try to sell. Yeah, get the, see if you can get the form lap one. If we can bring that one here next year, it would be amazing. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I was kind of waiting to get to this movie so fast. Yeah. The, you know, the, the resin systems are coming. That's where I probably want to go. <laughs> so, if you can print a bike, it's out. So, have you used these uh, to make cookies? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a low carb diet. Print a bike before the snow flash. We did that in Christmas time. Oh, did you say one? Yeah. We have a. Um, Mario Invincibility Star. That's, what That's nice. Three top <laughs> can you cause it not to do the honeycomb, or you can yes. do that? Yeah. You can. Yeah. There's a the settings. Yeah. If you go into the slicer, you check the settings. You'll see honeycomb fill, or you can see oh, like right. linear fill, or circular fill, or whatever kind of. Thing. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything you can modify. Yeah. <laughs> <I didn't know laughs> but I don't. I don't want to find. Yeah. <laughs> 